Hi everyone, uh, welcome back again. Uh, my name is Dan Pewterbaugh, I'm with Adobe. We are here at the New York Times uh, New Work Conference uh, in lovely Half Moon Bay, California. Uh, if we seem a little dim, uh, it's because uh, uh, California does have sufficient weather to cause a power outage. So uh, <laughs> we are coming to you faux live, uh, and, uh, but I hope that you'll still enjoy the conversation uh, today. So I'm joined today by uh, uh, Dan Danica Lashuk, uh, uh, who is the general manager of Beta Works Camp out in New York, which is a, a startup accelerator. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. And, um, we're, we're here and we've been talking about a lot of, of different issues, primarily sort of what's happening as Gen Z sort of enters the workplace. I mean, you're ideally situated, you know, in, in, in your career you've worked on these really iconic products. When you were at Apple, you worked on the iPhone and then on the iPod. Um, and now at, at Betaworks, you're, you're, you're really seeing sort of the next generation come in. Is there a shift in how they think about product management and product development? Um, you know, is, is there is there a different attitude towards that that you've observed? No, I think that the fundamentals of building great products don't really change over time, right? You need to be very focused on the problem you're solving, who you're building for, understanding their lives as best you can, particularly if we're talking about consumer products. Um, and so I don't think that shifts over time, but the thing um, that we're starting to see shift is uh, that product managers, founders, you know, product people are trying to start to think about the implications of what they're building um, and how that may uh, have a long-term impact on the world in general or society or certainly their customers' lives. Are we doing things that truly help connect people? Um, and is our business model aligned to that and as well as our product development? Or um, are we trying to serve multiple masters simultaneously and, that, and might that get us into trouble down the road um, when confronted with uh, challenges in the business uh, that we need to uh, that we need to address and not really being aligned on who our customer is and who our perhaps our users are who we think we're building products for right and and do you think that that's that's focused more on a concern for just and maybe I'm just thinking of this because my background is as an attorney at sort of regulatory and legal compliance or is it really just a deeper ethical concern that they're that they want to ensure that yeah. what they're doing is net net uh, you know a, 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 a good yeah. for one of a more specific term. Yeah, I, for the most part, I don't think a lot of very young startups are thinking about regulatory um, issues. It, it's like too far away. Um, they can only hope to get big enough that someone wants to you know, regulate what they're doing um, or the industry. I think it's more the general consciousness. You know, we've called it a, sort of a tech clash. Um, but this awareness that we spend a huge amount of time using technology, surrounded by technology, interacting with technology, and maybe some of the unintended consequences of that. Um, so I do think it's more about sort of the social consciousness of what's going on around us and wanting to try to make good decisions now about where we may end up in the future. Yeah, it, I mean, it is really interesting to see that a number of the companies that are in the news very often for not particularly good reasons if you go back to their, their genesis, they, they actually had, some of them even had very specific slogans that were designed to make sure that they were, that they were doing good. But I think that it's a, it really is important to set at the outset and then to sort of continue it. So, so I guess I would say, um, you know, in light of that, what, what, what do you think are like some key pieces of advice that, that you offer to some of the folks that come into uh, Betaworks? Yeah, I, you know, we try to coach teams to try to project out as far as they can into the future and where they might run into some thorny issues. I don't think anybody sets out to create technology that um, can undermine democracy or <laughs> other things Hopefully like not. that. No, I don't think that's the intention. I think it's possible that some people set out to just make something really big and become really successful. But for the most part, to start a company, you're driven by a real passion at, um, for the problem that you're trying to solve, for the thing that you're trying to build, um, because it's so much hard work. Right? It keeps you up at night all the time, and, and it is a mission for most mm. of 
the founders that we see. Um, so, you know, the advice that we try and give is, like, can, can you harness that? Can you, keep, can you keep focused on the good, but not ignore the potential for, for bad or for unintended consequence or for, you know, negative use cases? I think, you know, it's important for, for founders not to get too myopic and sort of only build for the people using their products the way they hoped they would, that best possible use case. Right. But think about from a very, you know, from very early on, how do you guard against or create systems that don't allow you to get into a situation um, where people are using it the wrong way? Right, right. Um, yeah, and I think that, that that is tough. And I and I absolutely get the, the point that, of course, when you're you're at, at a new startup, you're you're just trying to drive, you're just trying to every make day it <laughs> in, in any way possible. Yeah. And so you're not sort of thinking about the those longer term considerations, or or, or perhaps you are, but it, but it's a secondary consideration. Yeah, and I think that's true on lots of different vectors, right? That's on the application of your product or your technology, but it's also on how you hire and not sort of dealing with issues when you're a hundred person company and recognizing maybe you have a problem, mm -hmm. but how do you from the beginning create a culture in your company that um, tries really hard to find diverse points of view and you know hires from across a spectrum of disciplines? Um, because I think like it's really true that when you're just so heads down trying to get your first product out the door that you need to hire as quickly as you can. You need to make decisions as quickly as you can. You need to push, you know, on those engineering sprints as hard as you can, um, and and all that is true. And so, how do you do all of that? Right. Not slow down, right? But kind of make good decisions along the way that do become the foundation of the way the company makes decisions in the future. Because mm. um, I think that those early behaviors end up becoming long-term behaviors. Right. Right. It, 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 it starts it starts with that that, that, that little grain of sand um, so going to purely the fun part of things <laughs> what, what, what are uh, uh, massive ethical considerations aside what are some of the like really interesting uh, uh, technologies that, that you're seeing come up without getting into any sure. sort of NDA-ish yeah, material. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so a few things. We recently completed a camp, which is an accelerator program around live and interactive technology. Okay. Um, and that was a lot of fun. So you can think about things, new types of interactive shows being built on top of Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, so where, oh, yeah, yeah, where you start to see, particularly, I know we've talked to, uh, about Gen Z, but it's no longer enough to kind of sit back and watch, mm -hmm. right? Because this is a generation um, grown up with game consoles, gaming all the time, so they want to play. Mm -hmm. And now kind of overlay on that, I want to watch people play. Right. <laughs> and then if you t kind of continue with that, people want to be able to influence what they're watching and sort of participate in the outcome. So we're seeing really new kind of interactive shows and games, everything from kind of live and tune in experiences where the audience can participate by um, maybe voting on what a character in a show is doing mm -hmm. and how the story unfolds. So kind of 21st century choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. um, or more kind of tune in game shows. HQ Trivia last year really kind of paved the way for that. Mm -hmm. um, but new kinds of shows where people want to come together live on the internet mm -hmm. and share an experience but then influence the way that that experience or that entertainment unfolds. So a little bit like the, I think Netflix did the Bandersnatch yeah. experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but perhaps a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more granular, a little yeah. bit more and real live. time and yeah. live. And so, live. Yeah. So that your your audience kind of starts to form this um, real attachment because the outcome isn't predetermined. And so they really want to kind of say, okay, can I influence what's happening in the show? You know, related to that, but kind of a different paradigm is just more ways to share what we're doing. So mm. if, um, if I'm playing a game on my phone, um, but I'm at home and I'm a teenager, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's kind of like the modern play date, right? Or the right. modern LAN party, yeah. where we're all in our own homes, but we still want to be together doing this thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a, a company that we invested in that allows you to all sort of play the same game 
from your different locations on your phones simultaneously. So you get all the smack talking and the joking yeah, and yeah, the, you know, and yeah. you get to see your friend's face when you kill their <laughs> ship or their character in the game. Um, so we're, so that's really fun. And, you know, we've been really interested in that, um, not just the technology about, you know, to live stream that. Right. But the shift in consumer behavior and mm -hmm. sort of expectations. So mm -hmm. it's no longer enough, like I said, to watch something or even play it, but you want to kind of influence the outcome of your entertainment. Very, very cool. Well, as as, as an old school gamer, I want to play that, that, <laughs> that one that you were just talking yeah. about that. Let's make sure that, that, that gets out there. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it, yeah, uh, even under our, our somewhat <laughs> gloomy circumstances. It's uh, wonderful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us, uh, uh, for talking about Generation Z and the future of work. And please stay tuned and follow us at the hashtag AdobeTT.